So I've owned this bike for two years and I put a little over 20,000 miles on this motorcycle. And although I don't think I can offer anything new or groundbreaking on this motorcycle, I think it's time that I offer my thoughts and opinions on this bike in a long-term review. Hello everyone, this is Basil the Ortho Biker, your favorite internet pirate biker deacon. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time joining us, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notifications of any videos I may put out in the future. So today we are going to talk about the Sportster Iron 883. So I'm sure it's no secret to some of you that I love the Sportster. And I recently put out a video about all the good qualities of the Sportster and why I think you should buy one. But that aside, I think it's time to talk about the more practical or pragmatic aspects of this motorcycle. How it is as a daily rider, how it fares on long-term trips, and what it's like to own and live with a Sportster. Now specifically I have a 2018 Iron 883, and first I want to address some of the uh, elephants in the room as it were, or the common negative aspects that are often touted by Harley riders and aficionados and just Sportster haters in general. So no, it's not the most powerful motorcycle. The Sportster 1200 is certainly a better bike than this one, but it really comes down to aesthetics when you make your choice between the two. And that's really what drove me to get this bike initially. There were 1200s I could buy, but there were also 883s. But this was the only blacked out bike on the floor. I don't like chrome. <laughs> so, if you're buying a bike for speed, if you're buying a bike for performance and everything along those lines, then probably the Sportster's not a bike for you. But if you're buying it for appearance, for aesthetics, for how the bike feels and makes you feel, then you certainly gotta give a hard look at the Sportster. There's so many different flavors, colors, kinds, and so forth, the Sportsters on the market, that there's certainly one out there that will fit you. But yes, I got the Iron 883, purely for aesthetic reasons, out of the options that were given. I didn't like the AMF paint scheme on the 1200. I didn't like the chrome and out uh, 1200 models they had. Plus, I didn't want a carbureted bike. So there's that. Now, another thing that's argued is the Sportster can't do the interstate. I'm sorry, yes, yes it can. As someone who has taken this bike on several interstate trips, totaling a thousand miles or more, this bike most certainly can do the interstate. But, and there is a but to that, um, if you plan on doing interstate trips, at least well or comfortably, I highly, highly recommend you get some modifications or upgrades to the engine, uh, specifically a stage one upgrade to the motorcycle because the EPA regulations have forced a lot of the Harley motorcycles, or at least the older ones, stock for the factory floor to be somewhat muted. Even just the air cleaner installed in this bike made a drastic improvement to the throttle response. And I would say the type of exhaust you get is really dependent on the type of riding. If you're just going to do local riding and you're not going to go any long trips, slip-ons are more than enough for you. But if you want to squeeze as much performance out of this bike as you can, or you plan on doing long road trips where this bike will spend hours a day in the higher RPMs, then you're probably going to want to do a full stage one with a 2 in one exhaust like I have. And I have to say, the bike performs so much better with a 2 one exhaust at higher RPMs than, say, slip-ons or a standard 2 into 2 So yes, is the bike underpowered for its uh, particular class and size? Probably so, but even though it's not a performance bike, you can turn it into one later on if you choose to do so, and I do plan on doing that with a uh, Hammer Performance 1235 kit maybe a year or two down the road. But for now, 883 gives me all the power performance I need for how I use it. Would I like more power? Sure. Who, who wouldn't? Who doesn't want more power in their bike? It's fun. Is it needed? Not necessarily. So 
as I'm tackling these corners, I think I better talk about suspension. The stock suspension on this bike is abysmal. So if you plan on doing hard twisties, you know, like I'm doing, or you plan on taking it on long road trips, get a suspension upgrade. That is almost a necessity. The suspension upgrade will do wonders for this motorcycle, and it will not only improve the comfort of the ride, but it will also improve the performance of the bike in corners. I have a suspension 412 in the rear, progressive springs in the front, and although it's not groundbreaking difference in performance, the change is noticeable and it does improve the ride. And it helps the bike for not only day-to-day, uh, -day, daily rider use, like I use it, but as well as, uh, as I said, performance in the corners, and certainly helps with long distance rides. What other aspects should you upgrade on the Sportster? Definitely the seat. Stock seats suck. That's pretty much the case on most bikes. And if you haven't seen it, I put a video out on the Saddleman step-up seat, which I think is probably one of the best seats for this motorcycle. Plus, you can get a custom seat and it just looks pretty awesome. Now some people ask about the gas mileage on this motorcycle, and I have to say that is one that varies greatly. Now, my ride to work is a very, very short commute. The, pro the motorcycle probably doesn't get up to full operating temperature. So when I'm running it like that, my gas mileage is around 40, maybe 44 miles per gallon. However, if you ride this bike the way it's supposed to be ridden, and that's say 3,500 RPMs and above, this bike likes to live in its higher RPMs. Uh, I found that you get your best gas mileage by riding it that way. On the interstate, I get 55 miles per gallon or more. I think the most I have ever gotten, or the most I've ever uh, calculated at a refill, was 59 miles per gallon. So this bike does reasonably well. People often uh, detract the 3.2 gallon tank for long road trips and other, you know, day-to-day -day use. But honestly, if you think about it, you're probably going to be stopping every 100 miles or so anyways, or every couple of hours anyways, because uh, most of us just, our knees can't take being bent that long. Now granted, I've got uh, highway pegs on this bike now, so I could probably last a little longer on highway riding or highway cruising, but that's besides the point. Most people stop every couple of hours to uh, stretch their legs, get off their butt, relieve the pressure points, and so forth. As far as just an around town cruiser, you can see this bike does fantastic. Um, second, third gear is really all you need around town. If you got a nice exhaust on the bike, you sound cool while doing it. And because this bike is a blank canvas, because you can make this bike fit you, your personality, your vision or dream for the bike that you have imagined for yourself, you can look really cool while doing it too. That's just one of my favorite things about this bike. I can take my creativity out in the motorcycle and make it mine. Very rare is a stock Sportster, and you will almost never find two Sportsters that are identical. And if you do, take a picture, buy a lottery ticket, because that's the odds of that are pretty, pretty, pretty low. So yes, this bike can do the interstate. This bike can do long distance travel. Uh, with a sissy bar, you can slap a sissy bar bag on there. And there's a couple other bags and attachments you can get from Viking bags, depending on whether you have a passenger peg or not. But this bike can be kitted out with just about any form of luggage you want. Saddle bags, sissy bar bags, uh, side cases even if you want them. So this bike is more than capable of doing long trips, uh, long distance journeys, and being kitted out for day-to-day -day use. I, I, for a while I used this bike for grocery shopping, but I buy just a little bit more than I used to because I do all my grocery shopping for two weeks now instead of one. So I can't use the motorcycle, but if you are only shopping, looks like there's a cop ahead, but if you are shopping for yourself and only shopping on a weekly basis, the Sportster is more than capable of doing grocery shopping. The valley is beautiful at this time of year. You probably can't see it. I've shown it to you once before, but I'm gonna have to come back through here and get a picture at some point. 
And just like every other bridge, the bike sounds awesome. This bike can do anything you want it to. I've seen people take this on long trips. I've taken it on long trips. It's a good daily driver. Uh, with the right tires and suspension upgrades, you can take it off-road. Certainly not a full adventure bike, but you can take you can literally take this bike anywhere. The only limit is your imagination and realistically your wallet. But as far as reliability, I have never ever had an issue with this motorcycle. Knock on wood. <laughs> I personally think, and this is my opinion, I don't have hard numbers to back this up, but I personally feel that this is Harley Davidson's most reliable motorcycle they've ever made, specifically the Evo engine. This engine is bulletproof. It's agricultural, yes, but it's very simple. The engine is bulletproof. It's a proven design. And most importantly, as far as maintenance is concerned, you don't have to do valve adjustments. It's got push rods, so you don't have to do that five or 10,000 or 8,000 valve, mile valve adjustments or whatever the case may be. As far as maintenance is concerned, however, the Sportster does have shorter maintenance intervals as far as the oil change is concerned. Uh, I believe it's about three to 5,000 miles, and I say three to five, because uh, uh, you'll get differing answers depending on US. Some will say three, some will say five. One book say, may say one thing, one book may say the other. So as long as I get the oil change between three and 5,000 miles, I'm pretty happy with that. And because it's a belt-driven motorcycle, you don't have to maintenance the belt. However, I'm going to do a chain conversion on this at some point. So that will increase the amount of maintenance I have to do on the bike. But you know what? I don't mind wrenching on the motorcycle. I like maintenancing my motorcycle because I can turn the whole action into an act of prayer, as it were. Working on the motorcycle as I work on myself. I think one of the other most common questions about the Iron 883 is it a good beginner bike? And I would say yes, but with a caveat. Um, it is a good beginner bike. However, if you've never ridden a motorcycle before, before you take it anywhere, get crash protection. I mean, even though I have a few years of experience, 30 plus thousand miles under my belt, I have still managed to drop this bike. You'll just occasionally run into the circumstances you can avoid. And it's a beast to pick up sometimes, depending on the circumstances or the situation that caused you to crash your bike. But get crash protection. Uh, it helps protect the bike and it helps make the bike easier to get back onto your wheels, get it off its side. And I highly recommend the Bung King Crash Bar and their other assorted crash protections that are offered as well. Of course, it's your bike and you can do whatever you want with it. But I highly recommend not getting your motorcycle parts off Amazon. It's usually all Chinese made pieces of crap. Stick to the reputable makers. Deadbeat Customs, Low Route Customs, TC Brothers, Revzilla, and so forth. But since this bike has a massive aftermarket for this bike, even though they stop making the motorcycle, you will never, ever be in shortage of parts to fix or modify this bike. And there's some really bad parts about this bike, such as the grenade plate in the uh, stock Sportster clutch that most people should upgrade after about 15,000 miles or so. Are there things about this motorcycle that could be better? Sure. But the nail is closed in the coffin for the Sportster Lineage. No new Sportsters as far as the Evo engine is concerned will ever be made or put out by Harley Davidson in the future. So the Sportster is what it is and it's yours. I don't think there's a whole lot of other bikes that can feel as yours or as much a part of you as any other bike I've ever ridden or would even consider owning can be. So what can be said about the Sportster that hasn't already been said? Is it the best bike in the world? Nope. But it can be your bike. And I think that's the most important part of a Sportster and of owning a Sportster. You can make it yours. You can make it whatever you want. 
it is a reflection of your character and your personality, the style of riding that you do, and how you want to use your motorcycle. Can it do whatever you want it to do? Certainly. It can do long trips, it can do short trips, it can go off-road, it can stay on-road. You can use it, take it cross-country if you want. You can use it as a cafe racer, you can do just sh short day trips as a daily rider to and from work. This bike can be and do whatever you want it to be or do. And if we're being honest, I think that's really the case for any motorcycle. But there are a lot of naysayers and detractors out there for this bike. And uh, all I can say is this. Every single person that has ever owned and sold a Sportster regretted selling that bike after the fact. So much so that some went looking for the bike they sold just to get it back. I have never heard of anyone regretting owning a Sportster. And if they are there, they're not very vocal about it, and they are very few if they do exist. But I think I've waxed poetic long enough on the Sportster. I would like to hear your thoughts and opinions below. Do you own a Sportster? And if you do, what do you like about it? What's your favorite aspects and qualities of the motorcycle? If you don't like the Sportster, tell me why. Because I think every motorcycle has its place in the world, and this motorcycle neatly can fit in almost all of them. But I'm going to sign out and enjoy this uh, cool day on the weekend. So for now, keep your two wheels on the ground, shiny side up, and you all ride safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Why are you still here? I don't have anything funny to say today. Go, go on, move, go watch another one of my videos. <laughs>